What is up, guys? Patrick here uh, for the Muse Culture Podcast, and today I am with Con. Hey, guys. Terry. Hey. Marie. Hi, guys. James. Hello. And Martin. Hello. So, I don't know what we should do as our first topic of our first podcast ever, but uh, what, what do you think the biggest story is since... I tell you what we should do. We should definitely get this one over because this is going to cause the most problems. Ben Affleck, Batman good or not that's what we should do we should get that one over and done with good definitely good I feel really bad because I'm not really sure because I don't really care too much (laughs) how can you not care that Ben Affleck is Batman for a start I don't really know who Ben Affleck is necessarily I don't know what he looks like I'm too young for this Uh, Patrick have you seen come on you have got to see Armageddon right uh, yes, oh, but yeah, whether I remember the story. So he's the pansy one that cries a lot. Yeah, he's too. <laughs> Isn't that Bruce Willis? So, so what, what, what kind of characters has he depicted before? Daredevil. Well, he played, um, he played Daredevil, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. He, so he has been superheroes before. Um, Dogma, Mallrat, Jen Silent Bob. I think he's in that. Uh, he was in Pearl Harbor. Yes, yeah. he was in that. He was Is in there anything it? recent he's been in? Argo. He directed and started in Argo. Yeah, that I cannot fault him. Who's, who's seen I that? I haven't seen that. It was that. good, yeah, it was really good. You've seen it, didn't you, Marie? I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. He's I haven't a, seen it. He's a good director. Yeah, don't get but me wrong. He is, but it's Batman. Did he do Gone Baby Gone? He that did, yes. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Really uh, good. Marvin Freeman. And his Joseph Gordon Levitt, he should be Batman. Yeah. No, no, I don't agree. No, no. Because I reckon it would have been cool if he'd gone from the, from the, old, the, the last film of being Robin. Uh, and then become Batman because yeah. they're going to mix that into a storyline as well. Well, yeah, but there's just something about him though that just wasn't Batman material. I mean, no. yeah, he's I... just he just looks too young and doesn't look beefy enough. Exactly. Mm. No, there you go. Got, he's got enough growing. In. Well, but the thing is, they're trying to quite st- stick closely to the law and like John, whatever the hell he was called, isn't Batman, and he's not even any of the four Robins either, so he couldn't actually be a Robin. Ah, uh, that's a shame. So that's why I'm a about... bit confused with how it's actually going to going to carry on from this. Yeah, they're, so they're not making any more normal Batman films, are they? They're going to Batman versus Superman now. So yeah, ne- I didn't know I that was a yeah. thing. I've heard it's comics, isn't it? Yeah, there's um, like Batman and Superman have always had like a big rivalry because Superman's hilariously overpowered and Batman just doesn't trust him because Superman could destroy the world. Yeah. So like Batman's always like kind of secretly plotting his downfall just in case. And this has only ever been shown in comics before, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Sort of. Uh, okay. See, I've never really read a comic properly. Well, that makes me wonder, though, with talking about comics, is Ben Affleck, if he does Batman, one, is it going to be that they do a new Batman trilogy? Two, is he going to be in the Man of Steel, uh, the, the next film, which is either going to be Batman vs. Superman or it's going to be man of steel 2 and then after that is he going to be in justice league you know i mean there's a lot of films that he could be in but i'm really still just not seeing him as batman it's just not working for me in my head maybe maybe you'll turn it all around but right now i'm still not seeing it what makes you think he's not going to be a good batman i just haven't seen him in anything i mean okay i haven't seen as many ben affleck films as you have but i haven't seen him in anything where he's just not crying and being a bit whiny. He's he's not crap. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't get that far. I wouldn't say he was crap. He's he's all right. I mean, oh God, I don't even know how old I was when Daredevil came out. But it was it was okay. I remember sitting watching Daredevil with my granddad. So it was all well, right. I don't think but I've seen now, Daredevil. Now I watch it. I'm just like, you know what? Nah, this isn't working. You need to redo Daredevil. I wouldn't care if he was, if he was Daredevil again. If he did Daredevil again, absolutely fine. But he just needs to prove something to me. He needs to prove it to me. So yeah, yeah, you have got to prove it to me, Ben. Well, I reckon. On the... anyway, so that won't happen again now. No, on true. The... On the same line of thinking as that, though, what about the new Doctor Who? I haven't heard. There was quite oh. a bit. Of... I was. Oh, there was an uproar. I think a lot of people expected him. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's just not. He's not as energetic as was a Matt Smith before. So okay, I now I've been in be a like. cave, so I'm not aware of who the <coughs> new Doctor Who is. Who is he and what's he been yeah. in? It's um, I'm Peter not Capaldi, who was, um, he played Malcolm Tucker in the BBC comedy Thick of It, about politics, which is very He's a funny. really, really good actor. He is. If you haven't watched the Thick of It, watch it. It's Honestly, it's a, an absolute service to swearing. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really good actor, he but is, the problem yeah. is, he, I don't know if he's going to be, he's going to be, uh, who was the guy before who was pretty serious? Oh, I can't remember his so name. Matt Smith, before that there was um, 
Uh, David Tennant. And before that was is, uh, the person I'm thinking of. Chris Reckleston. That's the one. He was Apparently quite a serious like doctor. Chris Reckleston. Chris Reckleston uh, the only Northern Doctor. I think it, for I good think, reason. Uh, what's his name's going to be more like him, just because like he played quite a serious role. But I don't know. They might take the fun out of it because Matt Smith was like really energetic and quite flamboyant in what he did, which made it really entertaining, as well as being pretty scary. Did but, you like uh, him as Doctor Who? I thought I personally thought he was the best one I've seen, but I haven't seen like past Christopher Eccleston. I haven't seen any of them. Oh, Tennant was very good though. Uh, Tennant was yeah, very Tennant good was very good. Yeah, but I I still think Matt Smith was the best. Well, I think they're trying to go for like the opposite now. You know, like paradigm shift. Like yeah. some of the early Doctors, like John Pertwee or um, uh, Tom Baker. You know, very different, very serious kind of like avuncular yeah. Doctors. So I think that's maybe what they're aiming for now. You know, I That's feel it. like I need to go home and swallow a Doctor Who dictionary because you're all talking and I'm sort of going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't actually. Great. Yeah, great. I don't. I don't actually know that much about Doctor Who, but like I've only watched it from Christopher Eccleston. But I saw I was watching the uh, that program that was on when they released the new Doctor and they were going through a few things. So I didn't see no, that. there seems to be a lot of storyline and a lot of like rules inside of Doctor Who. Like, now it's the 12th Doctor. Shouldn't that be the last one or something? He can do it 13 times, I think. Ah. Oh. But um, his rival, the Master, did come back after 13 regenerations with some monster or something. It, it, it's sci-fi, you know. Rules are never there, are there to be broken. No, yeah. It's just in the writer's script, really, I guess, that, you know, everything changes. I think the problem with Doctor Who is that the BBC never knew what it was supposed to be. Either a kid show or an adult show. Or even when they tried to mix it up, it was never one or the other. Yeah. That's why they, they made that shit Sarah Jane Smith Adventures, which I thought was pretty good when I was younger. Um, which was like an offshoot of Doctor Who. That's right. Kids. They um, also made the strongly homoerotic Torchwood. My goodness, that was Torchwood was pretty good. It, oh, I like Torchwood. Torchwood was pretty good. I hated Torchwood. Torchwood was good, but it was... Um, it was very much uh, Russell T. Davis, like, channeling, like, a lot of his influence into it. Because before Russell T. Davis to uh, picked up Doctor Who, the last thing he made was Queer as Four. Torchwood felt like Carry On Doctor Who. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's really hard to see it as serious when you realise just how fabulous... That's right. Um, oh, what's he called? The guy who played the main character? John Barrowman? Yes. That's it, the one. Like, when you realise just how flamboyant John Barrowman is, it's really hard to see him as anything serious. You know, did anybody watch... Was it called Miracle Day? Yeah. Did yeah. anybody watch what's, that? What's that? I really liked it. And okay for oh, anybody no. listening to the podcast, you know, spoilers coming on or whatever you hear. But what the hell was all that stuff where he was getting it on with that other guy? <laughs> it was like soft porn. It that's what Torchwood is. Yeah, the thing is, though, it was a non-episode. So... Like, Miracle Day was seven episodes. That episode had no bearing on the plot at all. <laughs> no for a gay sex scene. I just yeah. felt like I needed some popcorn and a drink and needed to cover my wife's eyes while I watched it sort of thing. It was a little bit like, well, let's get it on. Oh, was that the one where they went back in time? And Yeah. There was, well, yeah, I, I, was I have seen that die. one. No, no, I thought there was one There was one where they went back in time and John Barrowman was like, you know, no, pretty graphically I, I on a guy. This, this one was where no one was dying. Yeah, that was Miracle yeah. Day. It was Oh, that's Miracle day. day. I remember that. I remember that, yeah. But one of the episodes was um, a whole flashback to like, God, it was like 1940s New York or yeah because they went back and then they had to go back to China didn't they for that yeah. massive hole in the ground which yeah, went through the whole so of the earth that that it felt like they'd run out of a story then they thought hang on now we need a sex scene <laughs> let's go back to the 1940s and they had John Barrowman as their main <laughs> character yeah, so yeah. They, quick they rate in some more ideas. sex with John Barrowman I reckon that was John Barrowman he went look if I can't you know like sing in this one then I'm going to have sex yeah yeah pretty much like David Hasselhoff <laughs> 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 Honestly, I blame this entirely on Russell T. Davies. I think there's a lot that that man has got on resolve that he needs to channel into the things he writes. Yeah. No, see, I've never been a fan of Doctor Who, and I'm so glad I haven't seen any of it now. <laughs> so you kind of get enveloped into it after a while, so... Yeah. You know, it's, you, if you miss a one, it's not normally that bad, actually, because most episodes end within that episode. Like, it's a 45-minute film, really. I don't know, that's what put me off the Matt Smith series, because a lot of them did seem to have multiple plot arcs. Yeah, see, there's there was the the more recent ones. There's been a lot. There's a, been a bigger underlying storyline going through the whole series. See, I like, like with, yeah, I thought that was a clever idea because it felt <coughs> a lot more fluid with the different episodes, even though each episode was a different story. 
on the especially with a crack in the wall. Though. So, uh, yeah, topic change. Breaking Bad. Who's been watching it? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Who hasn't? I haven't seen any of it. I'm spoilers. Going to not watching it. No, oh, no, please, no. spoilers. That's that's fine. I don't mind. I'll still watch. I it. have. I've started wow. watching it, but I found it too boring in the middle of season two, and I've refused to watch anymore. No, it, it's really slow. It gets better. It does. Um, yeah, everybody tells definitely. me, but I'm too lazy to go and just watch it. I don't want to have to like truck through them episodes. It's like Game of Thrones. That started off slow. I haven't seen that either. Once you pass the first two episodes, it gets so good. Oh, if you just yeah. read, read the books and then watch a TV show afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Which is what you should do. Fit the stones. But sorry, Breaking Terry. Breaking Bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh Jesus. I don't know. If, are you all up to date? So have you, yeah, have you guys seen the ending now? Uh, no, it's, it's still unfinished. But yeah, it's oh, still has, I thought, has it finished in America? No. Um, what, we get it the day, the day behind, I think. Oh, should yeah, we have ending finished. predictions? Everybody dies. There's <laughs> a nuclear explosion. Does somebody explosion. want to kind of like fill me in, okay? Because I don't really... I haven't seen it, and I know everybody's going to flog me or whatever, but what is the main gist of the story for anybody else that's watching that's not seen it? What What is Breaking Bad? It's a romantic comedy. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't wait to watch this. Yeah. Some romantic comedy with meth. Yes. With with men or with meth? Meth. Meth. Or both. Meth. Yeah. There's men in there as well. And yeah, in there's pants. definitely men in there. So it's a it's a, essentially it's a black comedy about a man who gets a diagnosed with terminal cancer. So he starts cooking crystal meth to provide for his family before he dies. But then obviously he gets stuck in the world of drugs and gangsters and whatnot. And it's him trying to sort of stay afloat in this world. How it sort of changes him. It's like his rise to power and corruption. Yeah. yeah. And I think a, that's, that's it's going to end. My prediction will end with him losing his family. That's the thing, because in the last episode they had that flashback. Well, yeah, the yeah. flashback right at the start. They were um, he it was sort of in the future, so to speak, and his whole house is derelict. And Do you think he fakes his own death? Yes, yeah, I think he does. That would explain why his neighbour was so shocked to see him. I don't think. I think more so that. Because that Heisenberg is like, um, I can't even think of the word, but like his name, like what he's known as, is sprayed across the wall. And What's then my name? <laughs> but like, uh, it seems to me like everybody knows who he is. He is like the criminal Heisenberg. And then she's amazed to actually see him basically on her doorstep. That's what it seemed to me like. Everybody knows who he is. He's this mastermind about this crystal meth guy. Like, I mean, are we okay to talk spoilers since we're here and we've lost mm. I don't what know, it hasn't finished yet. No, it hasn't finished yet. You can't do spoilers. I think the, the president is like yeah, two we're, weeks we're after. We're not going to spoil spoilers. the future, though. Well, no, but spoilers <laughs> of what we've seen thus far if you haven't caught to date yet. Yeah, let, let's do it. Because okay, go for it. Did anybody notice that, like, Hank kind of figured it out a bit too quickly? Like, he gets that book that has some writing in it, but that's it. He doesn't really figure it yeah. out. He's just yeah. like... This is a really vague suspicion. I'm going with this. Like, there's no backing up. There's no fact checking. He's just wait. Can you can you go it. back further back into the story? What what does this book mean? What does he find out? And what does he work out? Um, so, sorry, I'm trying to think whose book it was. He found a book with um a, some a message in it that uh, basically said to my friend or something along those lines, and then it yeah. just had WW, which is the main character's actual initials. Walter, Walter White. White. Yeah. yeah, and then uh. Basically, what White's uh, brother-in-law is this guy Hank, and he's got a book in his bathroom on the toilet, and <laughs> Hank's just gone in there to use the bathroom, flicks it open, and it's got a same me similar message, but it's got WW there again, and he just yeah again he just twigs. I think it should be pointed out that Hank is the head of the yeah, sorry, enforcement yeah. agency. Sorry, yeah, agreed. The reason the book is of significance is because it was given to him by a man that he murders really early on. And it's got that man's name as well. It says to WW from uh, GD, the initial yeah. of the man that he murders. So that's when Hank just puts it all together. But like, it just seems like he had re he, just, he has like a really vacuous uh, theory, but he just goes with it. He's like, yeah, it seems normal. Hmm. That's the thing. He seems like, like everyone was telling him to drop it. Too. Yeah, and then he confronts uh, he confronts Walt. And Walt doesn't deny it at all. He's just like, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. He sort of starts to deny it. And then right at the end, he's like, but if you think I'm that person, like, you've got to be careful. Because you know what I can do. Just to it's clarify, though, brilliant. Skylar White is a horrible person, isn't she? She's she really, is. Truly mean. Wait, what's she done? Well, she throws him out of the house, for one thing. This is the main guy's wife, by the way. Yeah, yeah I know who that is, yeah. She's really rude to him. She's really manipulative as well. 
She mm. was just like, I'm not your wife, I'm your prisoner. Get off yourself, love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Agreed. The whole affair thing and then her trying to make everyone feel bad for her just oh, grated on me something. Yeah. Oh, Has this really shown hated her. why he's bought that machine gun? No, no, exactly. Yeah, that was another thing. So do you should have his machine gun in his car. Because <laughs> we've seen Scarface. We've seen them watching Scarface. What? Do you think it's going to be a Scarface type of ending? What if that's well, he just gets killed it? and then it ends. Where well, he's going to fake his own death during a shootout. What if that's Tuco's ghost? From the second season? I'll say Tuco's dead. Tuco's yeah. actually in the cast list for the last episode. Mm-hmm. How? Uh, he's spoilers. Dead. <laughs> it will probably be everybody that Walt's killed. So you'll probably see it again. Like, he probably just reflects. I reckon it's everything. going to turn into loss, and he's going to turn this massive wheel, and then the the island's going to disappear, or the whole of America's going to disappear, and then he's going to go back in time. Uh, oh, Patrick, you have up. proper spoiled it for everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I can't believe you just did that. If you haven't Wait. seen The Sixth Sense, Bruce Willis is a ghost. By the way, Darth Vader <laughs> is Luke Skywalker's dad. Oh, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I've run out of spoilers now. And it was Hitler all along. The dog dies in Black in Call of Duty Ghosts. What? Just gonna, just gonna put it out there. No, I bet you they will actually just to pull on the. Oh, hat definitely. Tricks. They've got, to, yeah, they've got to pull, they kill the dog. It's like a film. Like the dog always dies. Look at I Am Legend. Dog died. Oh. I haven't seen that. You're killing it for me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you need to know is the dog died. You know what we died. should do? We should probably talk about games. You know what? Uh, oh, do you want to spoil it about games? I've got a massive yeah. one about Grand Theft Auto, but I'm not actually going to spoil it. I'm not actually going to say it. The dog dies in Great GTA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what about GTA? There's been all the trailers and stuff coming out recently, and uh, the announcement that the GTA Online is going to be a separate thing and it's going to come up two weeks later. Uh, what do you guys think about the fact that they seem seem to be separating the two apart into, I guess, two different games? I like I the idea of the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I love that. I mean, they, they label the GTA Online as a, what is it, an MMO, but it's only up to 16 players on a single server, so it's not, you know, it's not massively multiplayer as as they say. But uh, I mean, it has potential. You need, but it's, there's not enough people that you can be with your friends and a load of other people. But there's not like you'd have to find 16 friends if you really wanted to, I guess, experience it. 16 is actually quite small when you think of how big. Yeah, the exactly. Are. Yeah, like yeah. this this place is gonna be huge, and you're gonna be like buying a single apartment with sixteen other people in different ones across across the place. But uh, I I wonder what they're gonna do for the storyline. Well, it, for yeah. multiplayer or single? No, for single player. There's seven hundred missions for the multiplayer. So no way. Yeah, yeah that's but one of the a, things that's come out. two hundred of those race missions. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all they're all bowling. <laughs> oh, I can this game. I, I just so like can't run it. people over. What? Uh, there's I, golf I tried, and tennis. I tried in to this. drive around them. See, you know, I, are you I playing as a good guy? <laughs> it was like um, uh, God, I don't know if anybody's played it. Whatever, I'm assuming somebody has. Carmageddon. You know, I, I couldn't run people. <laughs> I used to try really to be a really safe driver and uh, drive around. And one of my friends was like, "Look, dude, you know, GTA. The whole point is you need to knock people over and steal yeah." Did you drugs did you play No Russian on uh, Modern Warfare Two? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm not very good at modern warfare. Oh. I just keep dying. D- um, are you the only man that follows the road laws on Grand Theft Auto? Like, you know, I got a, I got a friend that done that. <laughs> you yeah, you got to remember, guys. I'm I'm still you know learning to get my driving license, so I'm trying to practice <laughs> good, safe driving. So if there is some prostitute on the edge of the road, well, you got to to preserve her life. No, I am kind of interested it. to see right. what Grand Theft Auto will actually bring in with that whole sort of driving safely and that. Like, if you go through a red light and a cop's there, and fair enough, he chases you. But if he decides to pull you over, I really hope that he doesn't just come over and kill you. Or, you know, yes. or like, <laughs> wait a minute, you broke, like, you can pay a fine, Would or you can literally run away. If that depends on what kind of character you play as. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, you get like a. Oh, no, no, let's, a yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> no. but, uh, what about, what about the, uh, the fact that. GTA 5 and the moment's only been announced for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and there's no talk of them being on next gen so it's going to be interesting to see what the graphics are really like and also there's no PC version yet but the oh, it's obviously going to be one but well, those trailers are the, not PC yeah. they've the got PC to be versions always cook over, don't they? but the, like, the graphics um, like they can't be that advanced if they're not I don't believe the it's current gen those graphics but they no say way. it's they they're not advertising it at all for next gen unless they're going to wait a year and then sell it as next gen. Well, what would be the point? 
I, but because the game comes out before the new consoles, so they'd be they'd be stupid to announce the new games when the consoles haven't come out yet. But if they wait until I don't know Christmas or next year sometime, uh, release it again. But for the next gen, because the the Xbox One and the PS4, they're doing deals where if you buy it for the previous generation. I think you can trade in the game and get the new one for like ten dollars, like the digital version or something. Hmm. That's not bad. So it's a good idea. Like if you buy Black Ops or FIFA 14 or any of the the games that were then going to come out on the newer consoles. Hang on, are we only on FIFA 14 now? Yes. yes. Oh man. Because it, it went in, it's, it's just in years. So next year's one will be the 14th. Uh, yeah. this, it actually presents quite a good problem though because you've got games like Assassin's Creed coming out on both current gen and next yeah. gen it's going to be interesting to see what they take out of the current gen and like add in on the next gen yeah, yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm missing something but by the same time yeah. I don't want to have to wait until next gen comes out to play the game yeah I want to be playing GTA 4 on the PS3 but I don't want to then say have to like missing out on too much that's going to come out if it comes out on next gen by the, the way, this the would have looked much better on the PS4, that type of thing. Yeah. Who's yeah. got what next-gen consoles ordered, then? I don't, I don't have any. I've, got, I've paid for my PS4. I'm assuming you paid for it already. Oh, what, what have you got, um, Patrick? I said I'm a student, I can't afford one. You can't afford them? Right? No. <laughs> well, not unless I get my... My birthday's in November, so I could theoretically get one for my birthday. But I think I'd rather get a new graphics card and a new hard drive for my computer, because I've got 120 games on Steam and like 10 games on uh, Origin, so it's better than spending the same amount on a new je next gen console and having to buy new games for it. I gotta admit to start off with, I was a bit like, oh, Xbox, PlayStation, Xbox, but you know what, I mean, after watching E3, it was like, uh, yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, yeah PlayStation, they had the other <laughs> hand at the beginning, and then they kind of lost it a bit, and then Microsoft just can't make any right decisions. No, no I agree. And then the PR awesome. department should be shot. They can't make right decisions for outside of America. No, no. That's the no. other thing as well. Actually, like the, the event that they showed, the live one, it just showed American TV, American services. Yeah. And they were trying to like market this to the world. That doesn't make any sense. But like, we don't, we don't watch NFL. There's no uh, basketball with a little uh, basketball like league thing down the side. None. We don't have that. Any of that. It was a bit odd when they talking about fantasy leagues and they showed basketball as opposed to football. Like, I get if they're showing the concept, but they didn't even say about, like, oh, this is actually going to happen for the, like, the football, the Boxing Premier League football, uh, fantasy football and stuff like that. They didn't say anything like that. It was just marketed to Americans. You know, mm. did anybody see that? And I'm sure everybody did see it when um, uh, that guy asked about sharing games and, and such, and uh, <laughs> Sony made that little... Like twenty two second video about games. <laughs> oh, that was games. brilliant! That yeah, that was, was brilliant. Absolutely classic. I like, can't believe. It. I think they've got like fourteen million hits or something ridiculous like that now. Somebody must be making some serious money on that. <laughs> yeah, someone's got a pay rise and a promotion for coming up with that. <laughs> so, has the DRM has it gone completely, or is it up to the developers? Well, it's, they've turned it off now, haven't they? But they've turned it off. Come back. But yeah, like you the said, problem. they've turned it off. They haven't got rid of it. Has, has anyone told EA this? Um, yeah. EA, well, EA have been quite nice. They uh, they did the uh, Humble Bundle, which we can talk about in a minute, uh, trying to get some street cred back. And then they also took, taken off um, them code things for any uh, previous previous games. Because before, you, wouldn't, you couldn't go online in a pre-used game. That's you right, have to have a code passes. that costs like £8 or something. Or $10. It's ridiculous. Well, see, I have a theory about the Humble Bundle. Because it's like did they did they kill JFK? Oh, definitely, and they and they're responsible for third right. <laughs> but I mean, like the humble bundle, you know, it was pay however much you want for a pretty good selection of EA games. But yep. the majority of them were the ones that were given away when the Sim City went belly up, which meant that somewhere in EA they'd already considered those games a write off, so they weren't expecting any more income from those games anyway because they're giving them all away for free. And it was a very, very good PR stunt. Like it got yeah. them a lot of street cred, and it got them a lot of uh, a lot of people now what having to download Origin and have playing on Origin and potentially buying more games from Origin. 
just because they got these games at such a good price. For the folks back home, could you tell us what was on the, that sale? Yeah, I've got, I've got the list right here. So, the original games on offer were Dead Space, Dead Space 3, Burnout Paradise The Ultimate Box, Crisis 2 Un Ultimate Edition, Mirror's Edge, Medal of Honor, and if you paid more than the average purchase price, which at the end of it was about $5, so about £3.65, you could unlock Battlefield 3, The Sims, um, and it came with all of the DLC. And uh, after it had been announced, they actually added two more titles. One was called Populous, which is a game that came out in 1989, I think. A pretty crappy game. And then Command and Conqueror Red Alert 3. Uh, and they made, they sold 2.1 million bundles and made 10.5 million dollars. Jeez. Wow. And that's what the charities biggest. were they going to? Then? Uh, all proceeds went to the various charities. You got Human Rights Campaign. Uh, WOTC, San Francisco AIDS Foundation, American Cancer Society, and American Red Cross. And actually, in the Humble Bundle, you can choose exactly how much goes to everything. Uh, there's a thing called a Humble Tip, where Humble Bundle, like, you can choose for them to get a bit of the money. Um, but EA don't get any of the money whatsoever, like, it's not even well, an option. I thought it was, and you could drag it, you give it a little bit. Could you? I didn't yeah. see that when I did it. I didn't see that either. I'm with you, Patrick. I thought that they I didn't think EA anything. wanted any. I, I know, I've known previously you can do, maybe it was Yeah, just you have before. Yeah. Like when THQ were going under, they did a humble bundle, and that came with Saints Row 3 and uh, a load of different games. And at that point, you could, I think, put money towards THQ if you wanted to. But Did you just mention Saints Row? Yep. Has anyone played the fourth Saints Row game? I, yes. Uh, I am yet to play it, but from what I've heard, I've it sounds very it good. I'm still playing 3. Yeah, yeah I, I got did you think of it? free on the PS3. Oh, it's, it's PS3. so much fun! It is so much fun. It's a, definitely a cross between sort of a Crackdown with the collecting of the the orbs, sort of uh, the agil agility orbs that you used to get in Crackdown. With this, they've got um, I forget the name of them, but they're just scattered everywhere, and that's what you upgrade your powers that you've got. And yeah, that game's just fantastic. As much fun as Saints Row always has been with the craziness of everything you can do it's just escalated with the powers by a long way i'm really happy actually to see how far saints row has come because the first yeah. one is basically a gta knockoff yeah the second one came onto its own a bit the third, third was okay. one they just took the piss like it was they just, just took it was the brilliant. piss yeah and on the so fourth good. one they just ramped it up completely yeah and just made thing. its own franchise out of it see a friend of mine bought and uh, saints row 3 and he, he played it and went oh bit too vulgar for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, did you see about the Saints Row 4 in Australia? It got s prevented from yeah. being released so many times because the reason, the, the main reason was they had this gun in the game and what you would do is you walk up to someone and it was a massive dildo and you shoved it up their ass yeah. um, and then <laughs> shot them off, shot them off into the distance with this thing and apparently yeah. grotesque sexual acts is banned as part of like the rules set by the Australian government for games. So it was like above an M rating, and they just wouldn't allow it. I mean, let's not forget that the Australian uh, Films Committee and like their, their uh, rating squad is one of the harshest in the world. Yeah, they what they I have a, is so... they're known to do stuff like that. But it's yeah. all because the Australian films are quite gory, things like Bad Taste and and Brain Dead. Yeah, but they made it themselves, so you know they got the inside. So it's it's okay to be gore if you make it yourself. Yeah, if you're from Australia, it's fine. But let's do something oh, oh, maybe that's in. New Zealand. Maybe it is. So I hope no one's offended there. I've got to go, I'll just have a look online at a minute to see what games have been been banned. And uh, one we talked about earlier, apparently in the UK, Carmageddon was banned. It was Manhunt yeah. Two, yes. yes. and The Punisher. Um, the which pun the which Punisher? I gotta admit, I didn't know that these games were. I didn't know Carmageddon had been banned. I had no idea. Yeah, they I changed the zo the old people into zombies. I really feel yeah, sorry for like really feel sorry for people in United Arab Emirates. These are the games that have been banned. So you got Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Dark Siders, Dead Island, Dead Island Two, Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age Two, Fallout New Vegas, Godfather Two, God of War series, Grand Theft Auto series, Heavy Rain, and Justin God Among God Among Us. Mafia 2, Mass Effect 2 and 3, Max Payne 3, Red Dead Redemption, Saints Row the 3rd, and Spec Ops The Line. That's got to suck. <laughs> I can actually understand why some of those were banned, but I'm not seeing... I'm not like, sure guess... Heavy Rain. It says here so it was banned... So do you have banned... a sex scene in Heavy Rain, though? It said banned likely to G.E.R. Yeah, to sultry seduction scene. And I thought you had sex in Mass Effect. Sorry, Terry, go on. No, that's all right. 
the thing I find so good about the fact that they actually banned that is in Australia, Sanctuary 4, is that they actually used that to their own advantage and put that out as like that was a bonus. Like the yeah, game yeah, that the Australia advert, banned. It? It's like, oh, come this is on. brilliant, guys. Saudi Arabia. You'll never guess what was banned there. Pokemon. <laughs> the trading card game, though. Why mm. was Pokemon banned? Why? Because it involves gambling. And Zionism. Oh, yes, what? it does, yeah. It, it, I think it, that's it, brilliant that they banned God of War as well. But yeah, okay, I get it. The sex scenes, the nudity. Uh, but because it has the word God in the title, too. <laughs> okay, does anybody know what Zionism is? <laughs> what? Does anybody know what Zionism is? No. Because the, uh, it's, um, it's a Jewish culture, isn't it? Yes. Something about um, nationalism of Jews. I don't yeah, know. it's a form like of that. nationalism of Jews and the Jewish culture that supports the Jewish national state and the territory defined by the land of Israel. Uh, it supports upholding of the Jewish identity, opposes the asylum of Jews into the societies and advocated the return of Jews to Israel. But, but Kids, you have learnt a lot today. Saudi, <laughs> Saudi Arabia banned Pokemon because of Zionism and gambling. So I didn't yeah, know Pokemon was pushing. I don't see you know, the like, there. Yeah. yeah. You what? know, next time I go to the casino, I'm, I'm going to insist that we don't play blackjack. I'm just going to insist we play Pokemon. Yeah. Wait a yes. minute. One of the Pokemon are they Jewish in any way? No, I don't no. think so. It might be the. Um, it might be the. I, I don't know, pieces of, of like slavery and whatnot, capturing animals, fight for your leisure, things like that, maybe, I don't know. I, I, think, the, I think that's the next thing we should do, we should contact the Pokemon trading company <laughs> and ask capture animals. <laughs> Far Cry 3 was banned in Indonesia because of uh, considering Indonesian as a bad island to live on. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, yeah, you can see that though. Yeah. In, in their defence, if it was anything like Far Cry Three, it's a horrible place to live. <laughs> <laughs> Those bloody tigers are everywhere. Stingrays? <laughs> stingrays kept getting me. But the stingrays in Far Cry Three? I'm pretty sure there is. I was gonna say sharks. Yeah, I can't remember. Like, I can't. Stingray got me. And the thing with the sharks is that you can just stay out of the water. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like those tornado shark films. No, like oh, oh. that would be a good boss battle. Though. Sharknado, yeah, yeah. Watch that's out, how, that's how Far Cry Three should have finished. <laughs> you mean, versus a Sharknado. Actually, did know. anyone finish Far Cry Three? No. no, no. It was too big. I've seen, I've seen the ending because my mate finished it at one of the I series. It just had a bizarre rape scene in it, where you are being raped by one of the islanders. What? Yeah, basically, what? you either. The endings, have you. Has anyone Spoilers. seen the endings? Has, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I was just I wondering if anyone YouTube. else has. Yeah, that's, that's the, the only way I've really seen I've seen it next to me, but, um, yeah, spoilers. But, yeah, you either choose to kill all your friends and stay with this woman on this island that you've known for, what, a couple of days. And then she ends up actually basically raping you and then stabbing you in the heart Jesus to finish Christ. you off. Christ. That's, or, or that's the good ending. For, yeah, that was the good <laughs> ending, yeah, you know. Or you decide to save all your friends and kill everybody else. Surely you just save your friends. Why is that an option? I, I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit crazy because it's like you've been brainwashed. So yeah, I can understand that. But yeah, you just kind of flip from going from trying to free all your friends, like you're doing all this so you can get your friends out, to then murdering them all and having sex with this woman just to get stabbed in the heart. Oh, and oh, she gets pregnant. Cry, so there well, is a, there is a plus. There's a metaphor for life. Yeah. <laughs> I hear Far Cry 4 is based on that woman's child claiming benefits. <laughs> <laughs> but it was quite a bizarre, really bizarre ending to it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it. I never played the full game. Have, has anybody heard about uh, people hating on EA, as usual, because, you know, EA. Why would anyone hate EA? I know, I don't no. know. But uh, apparently EA is now favouring Microsoft over Sony. Yeah, have you heard, um, I was going to say this actually, about the Xbox One package that they're putting out for Europe. Yeah, you get you free get... FIFA 14. Yeah, you get a free FIFA 14. With every single console. Oh, no, is is it digital or thing. physical? No, I think it's a disc. Uh, yeah, that's I think it comes, like, yeah. Because I can see PlayStation has Drive Club with it, but that's a digital download. Yeah. It just seems really odd. And also the fact like that... Like FIFA. Like, I don't know why, going on like people favouring the Xbox. I don't know why Call of Duty thinks it's a good idea to have all of the content for Xbox a month early. Like, nobody's going to change systems to, like, see the content a month early. Oh, you don't know when? I, I think people will. 
Really? People yeah, the people. Yeah. yeah. No, the I've kids, seen, yeah. the kids that just play Call of Duty, yeah. definitely will. I mean, be I used that. to be one of them, and I, I didn't care. I just got there when it came out. You're older than twelve years old now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. The twelve year olds. That's a good point. When, when did I start playing Call of Duty? It must have been fourteen or fifteen, maybe. Probably fourteen. Yes, I was under twelve. But, uh, that's, you're, you're at the prime age group for Call of Duty. They must have played, uh, well paid, sorry, quite a lot of money to get these ex these exclusives. I mean, when you think about it, there's a lot of people that would probably just get the Xbox just for a free copy of FIFA. There's people who yeah, a lot of people would do that. FIFA. A lot of people would do that. The yeah. funny thing is, though, is that you can buy the PS4 and buy FIFA for cheaper than they're actually offering anyway. Yeah, but you don't get the Kinect thing, so a lot of young people oh, yeah. again would get the Kinect. <laughs> So you don't get looked at uh, while you're playing FIFA. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get the connect. I really I don't yeah, you understand can, the appeal of this. It's, it's a clever it concept, off, it's but it doesn't work. Well, I mean, like, when I play games, I'm usually half melted in my setting, yeah. just with my fingers barely moving on a control. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, I thought you were going to say you're half naked. <laughs> that, that too, a man's going to be free. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not arguing the point, I'm just, just saying. Those button presses are quite difficult. Exactly. You're going to need the extra yeah. digit. Yeah. When I come from home from work, I don't want to be jumping around my front room. No, exactly. I don't, I don't want to be really active. That just defeats. You've had to walk from your house to the car or your house to the train or something. You don't, you know, you don't need any more exercise than that. Exactly. And, I mean, the fridge is pretty far from the set. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, you add stairs to the equation, you got a big issue. Oh, I don't have stairs. I want to stand for that. Yeah, that's why I just stay in my room because stairs is too much. I don't think there's any games on it at the minute for the Connect that really. Makes you go. I really want to go and buy a Kinect. No, right there's now. nothing like, that you know. Martin says jump up and down. I mean, you don't really do you. There's nothing on there that makes you go. Yeah. I reckon. I, I reckon this is what they do. Okay. So you go back to the iToy days with the PlayStation Two, and you bring back Lemmings. That's it. <laughs> the Xbox One doubles in sales. The only thing, the only way I could see that Kinect actually taking off is if the Oculus Rift actually. Goes in hand in hand with it. That would be. That's the only way. But then, the only way to see it. I see people don't want to look stupid in their front room or in their bedroom, do they? They want to have no. their Oculus Rift on, you know, hit the head of the on table, the street. and then like waving their hands around at the same time. Mm. I mean, I'm already going to have to shut all the curtains before I crack on the Oculus Rift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, just out of safety. Oh, if anyone walks past your house and looks in through your window and you're there stood in your front room <laughs> with this thing on your face, <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you it's, seen it's the... interesting though what Microsoft assume gamers want because hmm. we don't all jump around in front of our TVs and we don't sit with a mass of people around us looking at us jumping around in front of our TVs. No. We, we come home, the controller, if you're my age, it rests on your stomach <laughs> and you just spend the night sat there like a zombie. But that's what you want to do, that's, that's chilling out. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. now that the Kinect's on, now that the Kinect's on all the time, everybody will be able to see you because they can just stream it over Twitch. <laughs> oh Jesus! That's gonna kill. The only thing I'm really looking YouTube. forward to on the Xbox has got to be Destiny. I know that it's on other consoles, well, on the PlayStation 4 as well, but I really can't wait to play that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see what it looks yeah. like. Is Destiny Definitely. the one that's like that massive multiplayer? They had that trailer. Oh, it's still, it game. reminds me of uh, Borderlands, but sort of uh, Halo sort of esque. Obviously, that's it's a good description for it, actually. It's the, the whole sort of uh, random gun. Well, I don't. I didn't think they actually said random gun generator, have they? But you get these varied guns with different stats and all that coming around, but it just yeah, it just seems like a Borderlands Halo. Did the random guns actually work? Mm. I tell you what, I'm looking forward to Titanfall. Yeah, I'm that does I'm, look good. Now you see, I'm I'm not bored by that. What? I understand I understand the gimmick and all that. It just uh, I don't know. It I don't, I don't a, know what it's a good gimmick, but beyond that, it's, it's kind of like Hawken. Just that in Hawken, you can't get out of your. Your, what is it? Your mech character. Your mech. Yeah. yeah. But Hawkins a very good example of how mech characters work, and the fact that the game's free is a uh, makes it. I don't know. I don't know if Titanfall is gonna, you know, hit too hard on the the uh, the Hawkins side of things, and people are just gonna go to Hawkins because it's free compared to you know having to spend forty mm. quid on a or fifty quid or however much a next gen game's gonna be to play basically the same things. I really don't think they're the same thing, to be honest. I mean, Hawkins a lot more about actually driving this big, big, massive robot, whereas, like, Titanfall's going to be like everything we loved about Call of Duty in a sci fi setting with vehicles which are walking robots. See, that could be its downfall as well, I guess, being more like Call of Duty, because you're just going to get the 12 year olds on it. Mm. 
Maybe. I mean, I've enjoyed games of Call of Duty before. Like, yeah, maybe, I used yeah. to. I used to really get good at Call of Duty. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, regardless of the of the twelve year olds on there, but I did enjoy it. Okay, who's feverishly yeah. clicking away? Yeah, I want to know what Martin's actually looking at. There's a lot of clicking. What game are you playing? Oh, oh, <laughs> You're still playing Warcraft. Yeah, I'm still playing Warcraft. Jesus. The one thing with um, Titanfall that really bugs me a little bit, it was, I can't, I'm can't. i pretty sure I've seen this in the gameplay trailer, is that when it was close to actually being destroyed, you pressed a button or button bashed a button and it ejected you from the thing. Now... The one thing that really annoyed me with Battlefield is the fact that you can get in and out of vehicles too quickly just as they're about to blow up. You can get away, you can get safe. Now, I would prefer something that you actually don't have a prompt come up. I know Battlefield doesn't, but with this, a prompt comes up to tell you to get out because it's going to blow. Yeah, that would be nice. That, that really grates on me. It's dumb it, it down, though, for, for no offence, kids, but it's dumb it down for kids. Yeah. You know, well, push this button to win. The thing is, though, it'll probably come on like an, with a 18-plus... Um, <laughs> yeah. age thing and then they go and stick this on it's like it, I don't know that just really grated on me that was one big down down point for me it's well, just lazy design though devil's advocate though it's the future these things should know they're going to blow up do you know what is yeah, the agree, future the Nintendo 2DS <laughs> Uh, sell, us, sell us on the 2DS. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's a 3DS without the 3D, without the ability to make it small and pocketable, without uh, without the... Apparently it's just one big touchscreen with a bar in the middle You can't flip it. it over, can you? No, it's just a, it's a brick. It's still two temperatures. You can make a house with it. So is it basically the Wii U controller? Uh, no, it's... It does... I don't know, it doesn't look like anything. It looks like a brick... It, it looks like a piece of cheese. Yeah, or cheese imagine or toast. Opening, yeah, it's imagine opening up the DS, but not closing it. Just keep the DS yeah. open, yeah. and that's pretty much well, it. Okay. Uh, is it supposed to be a lot smaller? Like, a lot more popular? No. No. no the, it's designed for kids, so it's The like trailer I've seen is a kid type. put it in a relatively big case, but the whole selling point is meant to be for people under seven, because apparently by Nintendo's saying, if you're under seven, you can't see their 3D. It's also quite a lot cheaper. Apparently, it's going to be $129, so that probably makes about £100 or less. Uh, it also allows you to play any DS game, uh, so there's 2,000 plus of them. Uh, so I think it's really like towards the younger generation. And when I the younger, I mean, like super young, the kind of people that play on the like iPhone. Um, you know those Tommy Tycho things? Yeah. Used to get a little, my first laptop. This or Leapfrog. <laughs> Leapfrog was the good ones. Leapfrogs were the educational ones. And then my had... first DS. <laughs> yeah. I'm completely up with that that name. But I think they, that'd be perfect. That was a stupid name to call it though, because nobody's going to buy a 2DS because it just sounds like a downgrade. It just yeah. sounds like those snake oil snake salesmen in the old west, you know. Now you can play all your favorite 3D games in 2D. Uh, yeah, like I you don't couldn't do it before. I don't see how that's a selling yeah. point because on the 3DS you just move down the 3D thing and it turns it off. <laughs> yeah, so you obviously couldn't do it though because no, you could. Does it no, you, you can. Yeah, but that's the whole point. They, they, their gimmick is we've already done it for you, so you don't have to. But I'd much which rather the pointless. option. Like I'd much rather the option point of is the price, isn't it? Yeah, the selling point is going to be the price and the fact that it can backwards compatible of all of the DS games. Because does, like does the 3DS have a DS card slot in it? Um, or did it go like the PS Go so. and not a PSP Go and not have anything? No, no, they must have a card slot in it. Well, the PSP Go was good because you could download whatever games you want. I didn't, I didn't think it, it didn't sell very much, did it? Uh, no, but it turned out to be very open source after they stopped selling it. Ah, I, I like the Sony phone that was like a looked like the PS PSP Go. That was the Nvidia? No, not the Nvidia, the Xperia Play. Yeah, I think it was. Who remembers the Engage? The Engage. Yes, yeah, my friend. Oh, the Engage. Wow. That was a thing. Just, it was. It was a thing. You could get like Tomb Raider on it. It was amazing. Yeah, it was a really <laughs> odd console. Yeah, when was I was it a like, console or a phone? It was a phone. Was, yeah, I think it was dedicated phone. Yeah, it was oh, a, it was, it was a, a phone, phone with a built-in console. And <laughs> you, you know, they had yeah, cartridges. Like that. that was the problem. It was a phone with cartridges. <laughs> that made it amazing. Really terrible. <laughs> what about the Nvidia Shield for mobile gaming though? That seems oh. to be a a really good step forward. I think I'm going to confuse it when uh, I put it next to my Xbox controller. I'm going to end up picking the wrong thing up. I think you know. It's Are you actually going to get one? 
I it just reminds me of They're three hundred dollars, which well that must be two hundred and thirty quid, something like that, two hundred pounds. So I don't know if it's worth the investment now, no. but it's it's like I, think, I guess they're testing the water with it. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what what you can do with it. I've seen quite a lot of the benchmarks, and it's really powerful. But uh, like it's and the best part of it isn't it a Euro game of this year? It is same with the Oculus Rift. I wouldn't mind having a go. Yeah, I want to have a go. Both of them actually. See that. What the about that um, wiki machine? Is the what? A wiki handheld. Or am I just speaking of handhelds right now? Wiki. There probably am. There probably is one in development. Which there's what, everything else. What, like Wikipedia, where it just like, gives you articles? Well, that's what I think <laughs> it is, but I don't think... That's it's what like, I think, that's but just that's just my imagination. That's just an iPhone or an Android phone, isn't it? No, there's actually a new handheld coming out. That's stupid. Or gaming tablet, as they call them now. Yeah, I don't know why... They, yeah, you, nowadays, you just got to build a tablet that works with gaming instead of building a gaming tablet, because tablets are so much more diverse and usable. Yeah, I just... W- I just went on Google and typed in wiki gaming tablet. They call it the wiki pad. Oh, okay. Does it actually display so, Wikipedia? So, so what you're saying is the wiki iPad. Uh, the tablet made for games. Basically, it's a tablet, but it comes with a controller that when you you can slide the tablet oh, into the controller. I've seen this. And it kind of looks like the Wii U pad, but bigger. Yeah, so Has you... it shown any games for it? No, no, no. It's not. It's not a tablet. It's the outside. Like, I'll put this it's up a in normal tablet. Skype. Yeah, you link it on Skype. It's a normal uh, tablet, like any tablet. And what you do, I think it's built for the Nexus 7 at the moment, but it's like having an Xbox controller, two sides cut in half and stuck to the edges in landscape mode. Yeah. And then. Yes, right. it looks exactly like that. Yeah. It's in um, Skype if you want. Well, what about. Who is it who's making the. Another tablet? It was in. As if anybody watches the video game high school, they have it in there. I can't remember who made it. Not Nvidia, someone else. But this does look like a good idea. The, but the, the the controls have to be good enough. I think with mm. tablet gaming, is control, especially touch, is always a major factor. It yeah. Can really make or break games. Like I've been playing a fair bit on the iPad recently, and XCOM, for instance, works really well on as touch controls. But I know things like shooters and FPS things like that just don't work very well. You know, I need to get out more because I've been playing Skylanders on my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I play Real Racing 3. That's a really good game. Yeah, it is, yeah. And it's free as well. Well, it's not free. Until the well, I don't, I've never paid for anything. <laughs> pay for petrol. Well, you've got to pay to repair your car before you break this wear down and stuff. Well, you've just, just got really you just got to make sure that you don't ever run out of them gold coin things because they can get expensive. Yeah. But do you think this is a too too little too late now? Because about two years ago, mobile gaming was the big thing. Mm. Now well, all these mobile devices are coming out. Isn't it oversaturating the market? Yeah, look at that company. What's this? Zynga? They're yeah. ruined. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And why did the Microsoft uh, CEO go to Zynga? Or the Xbox CEO? What's his name? Uh, Bob. What's his name now? Yeah, I know what you mean as well. Out of the frying pan into the fire. Yeah. It was, his was it Matrick? Metric? Matrick, yeah. John. Don, Don, Ma- Don, Don Matrick. Matrick. Yeah, something like that. Don Matrick, his name was. We yeah. do our research here at Amuse Culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do our research I mean, on site, like whilst we're doing the podcast. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, I can't fault him for jumping ship from Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft. Made well, because he cocked up and then made a massive mistake and everybody was blaming him. So, yeah, it was probably quite a good time to jump ship. But to Zynga, and he's gone from. Best not. The thing is, he's gone from a uh, head of a uh, division to a uh, CEO. Mm, can't really fault the bloke on that, but. But Zynga's yeah, turning into BlackBerry like it, just crap. Agreed, but you you probably still have the lovers. Probably still have the fans. Well, it, it wasn't it bought really out. Hang on, well. Zynga was bought out by someone, wasn't it? And then it was like not shut down, but. Let's have a look. What's the last thing Zynga put out? Uh, it must have been good if we all remember it. As of July... <laughs> this is the awkward silence. Are they responsible for Farmville? Oh, they I'm pretty sh- sure Zynga did Farmville, didn't they? I don't know, probably. But as of t- July 27th, 2013, Zynga has reportedly lost half of its user base from the previous year. Consequently, investors decreased Zynga's valuation by 400 million. Well, that's not looking good. It, so he, I think they laid a lot of people off, though, didn't they, recently? Yeah. I know they, they had some problems, and they did lay a lot of people off. 
I can't remember the company that they were competing with. I really can't remember who it was now, but they were doing churning out more mobile games, uh, and a lot of people were playing them and moving from Zynga. But I can't remember who the company was now. I was What's listening that? to it the podcast a while ago. Game Lofter, um, <laughs> Game Lofter, well known for churning out copies of famous games. Game Lofter, they're quite good though. Some of their games are really good, then others are not so good. I mean, like they're really odd copies. They are really well done, but. I just can't help but notice that they are knockoffs. I'd actually like to see Gameloft go onto the consoles. Just to see what they can do with a big budget. Yeah, but it's, they're just forgeries. It's just like buying like a, like a cheap, a fake watch in Spain or something. It's like the Nintendo 2DS. <laughs> yeah. So Zynga, Zynga has 11 Facebook games and 17 titles for mobile platforms at the moment. I'll give you a taste of some of them. We got Castleville, Sheffville, Cityville, Cityville, Holiday Town, Cityville, Hometown. You got Farmville, Farmville 2, Farmville Mobile. Uh, what else you got here? Uh, you, is anyone else oh, they made Mafia theme, Wars. Yeah. I used to play that on MySpace. You got Yeovil, Zynga. I feel so old right now. <laughs> <laughs> MySpace. MySpace, that was a thing. What about Pixo Chat? Does anybody remember that? No. <laughs> no. That was a, so what is it? It was like where you can make like your own page, kind of like a website. It's really basic, and people used to use like HTML codes to get like weird cursors and. Oh my goodness! It was there were mental. lots of like black backgrounds and green text. Uh, oh, you could do that on their MySpace as well. Yeah, you could. The new MySpace looks it? really good. It's really well designed, but nobody uses it. Wait, is it still going? Yeah, they relaunched it with Justin Timberlake. You need to check it out. Mark. It looks really. It sounds like the thing to go to. It's so it's well, really well designed, but it's just for music at the moment. Like nobody else. Really think, no, oh yeah, MySpace are bands. Yeah, that's the one thing that like, like small bands used to always have. Yeah, it's really really well done. But uh, it hasn't. Does anyone remember the old GeoCities websites? Yes. I miss those. You know, we'd get a really bad background image, really bad. Text. GeoCities were done by Shit Yahoo, track. isn't it? That's it, yeah. yeah. They're still going, you know. I'm going to just find oh, no, some it's been closed. websites. I just went oh. onto Yahoo GeoCities <laughs> and it's been closed. Which is like I bad animated GIF files. Who remembers Time Computers? No. I remember it. Time we Computers. sell them. Yeah, Time Computers now. They've changed to an online web provider called Time Talk. They provide emails and internet, but it's really old and really horrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like it, it's for people who have who got a computer twenty years ago that didn't bother to update themselves or the computer. I'm it's, laughing at it, but I just downloaded a soundtrack of Spectrum loading sounds. <laughs> 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 just just because I missed the whole screeching in there. I, I'm not sure. I, know, I don't think I know what to say now. <laughs> what about just bang your head against the wall? That's the same sound. Does anybody think it's unfair that GameStop managers are getting a free Xbox One and PS4 at launch, and also anybody working for Xbox is getting a free Xbox One? Well, I mean, Game I, Station I, used to do that. I reckon Game are probably going to do it as well because uh, in, in my past days, I used to work for Game Station before they were defunct, and uh, the managers used to get one too if a new console came out when the. Xbox Slim was out and the Kinect, they all got one and went to a, a conference and such. I always wanted to be a manager, I just wanted one. It makes sense though, if they're going to sell the product, it's best that they experience it. Yeah. Because you go into most game shops and you ask them about games, and to be honest, they, even though they still scratch their heads. Yeah, I think that should be a criteria of working in a game shop. You should actually know something about games. Like, you can't just be a salesman. You need, you yeah. need to know something about gaming. You actually mentioned games to the people in my local game store. Hello, folks, if you're listening. Um, and they don't have a clue. It's really you're looking annoying. disgust. How dare you mention What I games find it funny shop. is I'll go into, say, a phone shop when I was looking at getting a new phone, and going into game shops or a technology shop like a computer shop. i got a good example here. So, went into PC World with my granddad because he wanted a new computer. Now, he's my oh, granddad. He doesn't bad. want anything super powerful, but he wants something that will work and last him for a few years. So we go in there, and the, this guy is showing, is like trying to show us around different computers, and he's showing him gaming computers. <laughs> and this guy is trying to explain to us that this is what he needs, and I knew more about the computers than he did. That's not hard for PC World, though, to be honest. <laughs> like, if you're gonna, I thought, I always thought, like, I'd like to work in PC World because I know enough about computers, but. You just get, probably would have fired you for that. Yeah, like you, you get fired for knowing what, like you, you get fired for recommending someone the correct computer, not the most expensive one. You know, I used to work for um, 
their head office call centre once in the technical um, service department and I remember going, I think it's just things about grandads, I remember going with my granddad to go and get uh, a computer and I brought an advent um, which I think was Dixon's own own brand at the time and I remember being in there and talking to one of the sales guys and he tried to sell me the cover plan and trying to explain to him I didn't need the cover plan and they tried to they sell me the cover plan cover plans. oh they were extortionate but you know what they, were, they just didn't know that you didn't have to sell this sort of stuff I've got to admit I absolutely hate PC World because if you go in there they don't know anything no. about no. computers but but I will spring to Games Defense because when we had Game Station here, I'm going to admit, if it was Game or Game Station, and I know that they're the same company, I used to go to Game oh, Station yeah, every because time. they knew what you wanted. They were just like, I, I mean, they were kids just like we were, and they, they played everything and they knew everything. But when you went to Game and said, okay, I want to buy something for my 10-year-old or I want to buy um, a simulator game, they just didn't have a clue. But since Game Station closed and they amalgamated the staff, the guys in our current game store in Nottingham, I, I will give them credit, they do seem to know a hell of a lot about the games because the, the guys that used to work again at Game Station, they've moved to the game store and they really do make it, but there, there are two game stores. One of them knows nothing because they're brand new staff. The other one, really knowledgeable, but I am kind of with James. If I go somewhere else to a different game store, they really don't seem to know a lot about the games. It's like you're teaching them yeah. at the end of the day what's going like on. Like, you want store. to go in there for advice, and you end up coming out, like, having to tell them stuff about what, what you want, and <laughs> it's annoying. I was I there one Christmas, and a mother was buying Call of Duty for her son, and the, the sales assistant said, what type of games does your son like? And she goes, well, he's got Call of Duty on the Xbox. So the sales assistant is trying to pick a game to match that, and then he goes, "Well, what about Call of Duty on the PlayStation?" And it's the exact same <laughs> game. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I mean, if you like it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a conversation killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, game. Well, no. Nah, just quickly, I just quickly, I would defend my game, the local one in Bristol, Cribs Causeway. Cannot fault. They're always they're always willing to talk about computer games. To be fair, they've actually talked to me for about 10, 15 minutes holding up a queue. And I've actually tried to leave to actually get out of the way to let someone else buy a product. And they've just carried on talking. So what, just like I attack with you to the ground? <laughs> to be fair, he could have done. It looked like that he was going to. But they're knowledgeable up in Bristol. Got a hand into them. Has anybody seen... You can luck out and get a good store every now and again. Yeah. Has anybody seen... Um them and little Android consoles in game recently because I haven't seen one yet I want to see what they're like the, uh, the Ouya, game stick. yeah the game, game stick and then what's the other one called that was a massive flop there is a Ouya. Ouya, Ouya. that's the one yeah the Ouya, yeah yeah apparently I've seen, yeah. I've seen them traded in yeah <laughs> <laughs> wait so you, you've never has anybody actually bought one from your, the shop that you work in no like, I, I've seen them like traded at the CX and stuff but like I Did you know how much how much are they giving the person for them? No. Just peanuts. That's the thing, they don't really seem to advertise them that well. They're just sort of like either plant they got a on massive the side of a shelf from the, or... It's basically the Kickstarter, it's all they've ever had. Yeah. So The UE hasn't really interested me, to be honest, looking at it. And I don't apparently it's terrible. I'm not really that interested. No. I really actually do want to play on a game stick. I don't know why, but I just look at it and... It, it reminds me a bit of a Wii, I suppose, a Wii U or whatever. I do really want to have a go on it. I'm just, I'm hoping it's going to be better than the Ouya. You just don't want to pay the for Ouya, it. Yeah, that's it. The <laughs> Ouya, they, they're, like, they go for £100 retail. If you want to buy one from CEX used, they're £90. And they'll buy them off you for 42 Jeez. So you are losing so much money on that. That is a big difference. That is a big loss there. <laughs> Do they have demo stations set up in the game store? Mm, what, for the Ouya? Well, this is what I hate. They try to sell you a new machine, but you can't actually play it. Yeah. yeah. To be but fair, they don't really even try to sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> they're not even trying that hard. I've, they should I've, steer I, you away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so do you want to buy an Xbox? Xbox? No, I've never even seen sort of a game stick actually out. I've only seen them yep. just on the side. I've, I've only heard it didn't even say new console. It didn't even say what it was. It just said game stick, and it was on a shelf. That could be anything. I saw a poster and I thought it was a game pad. Yeah, yeah, like yeah exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, I reckon the way forward for gaming has got to be the Chromecast connected to a tablet, playing a game through that onto your big TV. No, no, it, I, don't, I just don't see it. I don't, Not, see it. I, don't, I don't mean for like gaming in general, I just mean like that kind of concept of Android gaming. If you're going to do it, it's got to be wireless and it's got to be with something you already own. You don't want to have to buy a like a cheap little thing to plug into the side of your TV because it's taking up one of them valuable HDMI ports. I tell you what, I'm sad to see fade in obscurity on live. I've never yeah, I've heard of that, to I've never used it. It was such a good idea, but it just lost funding. I just don't think people adopted it. Would well you like to explain to everyone what exactly it entailed? OnLive was. Yeah, I mean, OnLive was um, cloud based uh, graphics processing. So you literally got a wee box, size of, let's say, your wallet, and you plugged it into your TV, and it just essentially sent you a video from their server. So all the processing, like all the um, all the game processing, all the graphics and whatnot, was done on their end, and then you just got the video piped straight through. So no matter how old your computer was, or how bad your TV was, or whatever, you got the same perfect graphics no matter where you were. But how? Which was a really cool how idea. How was the lag? A really good concept. No, it was lag free when I tried it. Jesus. Yeah, I mean there was a teeny, it was a teeny bit of tearing sometimes if your connection wasn't perfect. But other than that, it was really good, and they had a control design by I think it was by McNair. And it was like the best of PlayStation and Xbox rolled into one control. It was a really nice idea. I see. I just I can't really remember it even being advertised. It, it well, I think that was part of the problem. Like part yeah. of the earlier, it had its own online store, which is kind of like its version of Steam. And I think it just went up against the Titans and just failed. Yeah, that's the thing. Something like that needs a big push. Yeah, I think maybe it just didn't have But it, it was a really yeah, nice a idea. Yeah, and definitely. Like, it could be. It could be what the, you know, the next Xbox maybe. Yeah, with the cloud. Well, isn't it what PS4. PlayStation are doing? Yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's um, rumbling that there's certain analysts that are saying this, like this um, generation of consoles will be the last. Uh, like as they sound. Yeah, I, I can see it all going digital. Like the, there won't be any disc drives in the next one. I can see that. Yeah. It's, like even Xbox was trying to push that this time round. They were trying to dictate that. Basically, as soon as you install that game, that disc's pointless. So next time round, when we make our next console, you won't need a disc. You're just used to not having discs. The only problem is, console players are so used to having the disc, you tell them not to use the disc, it, it's, what? No, this isn't a console, you're just trying to fob us off here. Yeah? Well, it's, yeah, do you want to spend £40 on something you can't hold in your hands? Completely, yeah. yeah. Whereas well, PC gamers, we've been used to that for years. Yeah, like, learn to let go, you know? Yeah, well, we don't trade games just because the fact that we buy it, we install it, and then you put the code straight on to say that I own this game. Whereas console players and the kids like Xbox and uh, sorry, Call of Duty and that on the Xbox and that they're just not used to it. It's just the wrong time. It comes down to trust, I think. I mean, like I trust Steam to hold all my games, but like if Steam suddenly failed and it's like right, Steam's gone. Yeah. There's like thousands of pounds of my money just gone. I have 122 yeah. games that I couldn't play if I didn't have internet. Yeah. But like, I just mm. trust Steam to keep my games and that they'll be there waiting for me. But something smaller like OnLive or Origin, I mean, you like Origin, you know, if that disappears, which would be slightly more, I guess, expected. I, I guess they don't trust it as much, and I guess maybe that's the way gamers are feeling about things like Xbox and PlayStation. They don't trust these. It's invisible place to hold their games. I've got to admit, I'm one of these people. I am definitely one of these people. Yeah, okay, Steam's been around for so long, and I don't have a lot of Steam games. I've got a few, but definitely, if I'm going to buy a game, and this is the problem that I'm having with PlayStation 4 right now, where you know I have seen a few of the games that they're saying if you buy them online from the PlayStation Store, you will be able to use them with the PlayStation 4. I just can't bring myself to do it. I have to go and buy a physical copy of a game, because I know... If something goes you wrong, can take it back. it's there. Yeah. It is yeah. on the shelf. I can take it back. I can trade it in. I can, you know, play and with there's a refunds friend. as well. I've, I've got it. Hmm. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's a big. You just know it's safe and secure. But something like that, and I suppose I'm a little, you know, I think PlayStation have come on massively from it. But when they had the whole problem and the server went down and the security risk, and then you know, I just kind of went, nah, I, I can't do it. I, I just I need to go and buy a game. Plus I'm. I want all the collector's stuff as well. I have to go and buy collector's stuff. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> that. I used to do that, and, and then it dominated my room. The, the minute it's dominated my, my attic, because I've got no place to put anything, it's just if I see anything, I'm like, yep, yeah, Halo, I'll have that. Star Wars, <laughs> I'll have that. I mean, I even brought... It, I can't even say that I thought it was a fantastic game. God of War Ascension. I've got the standard edition, and then the collector's edition was uh, a dirt cheap on Amazon. So, um... 
I brought that as well. I don't need it. I just want it. What? Three quid more? I think I'll have it. Well, exactly. It was nearly <laughs> the same price. It was like, mm, same price with a... I'm sorry, but it was a crappy Kratos figure. It's really, really bad, but I had to have it. I can't believe that it came out as 80 quid, though, to start off with. There was no way in hell I would pay yeah, it to pound with they, it. Yeah, they do up the prices of it. You know what gets me every time, and this is a tip for any game shop I go to. If you're trying to sell me something, tell me it comes in a tin. If it comes in a tin, <laughs> I'll have it. <laughs> it's like, do you want the standard edition? It's 30. Do you want the tin? It's 40. Give me the tin. Do you know what? That, that brings on to a, a topic that we should definitely have on the next Skype conversation that we have is about collect um, collector's edition games because you know what I, I sort of feel that it's a little bit saturated with the collector's editions when you get one there's nothing real special about it Everybody yeah there's no one, I have noticed at the minute that well really... hang on there Com what about Saints Row 4 yeah yes. exactly that's what I was just going to say about the Saints <laughs> Row and about god I can't remember what the racing game was it might have been maybe Grid 2 I can't remember what yeah, you Grid got two a car was, with yeah. it Yes, um, it's about to come out. Is it Grid 3 or something right now? Is it 2? Two? 2 or 3? One of the Grid games. I think it's yeah, 3. Yeah, it's like literally, it's just like an entire car. Well, Ma Martin, did you not see the Saints Row one? Yeah. The million dollar pack. That that's really that's it. Oh my god. I'd be curious actually if anyone <laughs> did buy that. I would love to know actually if people did buy it. I mean, you know what? Sonic there was only one. Podcast. Let's do it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. There was only the one, which I thought was brilliant. Who that's buys what that? you want to buy though, because when you buy a collector's edition, I mean, I brought, um, God, the name alludes me, it was a Star Wars one, um, The Old Republic, when I got Knights that. Knights of the Old Republic. No, it wasn't Knights of the Old Republic, that was the old one, I can't remember what the new one's called. The new one was Old Republic. Old Just, Republic, yeah. so I should know this, but and, and I there's bought another, it. There's another game of Fade and Obscurity, God rest it. I still play it. Yeah, I just wish other people did as well. <laughs> it's just me and my own against the Empire. We well, can play it up to level 50 for free at the minute. Uh, I, yeah. I have, I have been. It's just really empty and the restrictions are a little bit. But anyway. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go now and uh, go buy that million thing, uh, million pound uh, Saints Row <laughs> uh, bundle and I'll come back next week and tell you guys how it was. I think, that, I think that's brilliant. So, yeah, okay, well, we'll wrap up a podcast and uh, Patrick, you can go and buy yep. that. And then the next podcast, you can tell us all about it. James is going to be buying Grid, um, and I'm just going to wait for something that's like a you know a million pound that's Lego related, and then yep. we're good. I'll just build an empire of tin. <laughs> 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 what was the last collector's game you bought, all of you? Yeah, we'll end with this. What was the last collector's game you bought? I know what mine was. Should I go first? Go ahead. Call of Duty yeah. World at War. And the reason is, what, is because I, I traded in nearly all my PS2 games when I first got an Xbox and bought that. What was the collector's thing with it? It what was, was the, the gimmick? a little, uh, like, cask, uh, little, little, what are the things that people drink out of? What are they called? Cubs. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> little tin things. Or flask. A flask, like, yeah. yeah. Flask. One of them alcoholic flasks. Yeah. Considering I was like, must have been like 12 or 13 or something at the time. So That was a gimmick. Yeah. Thought it'd come with free alcohol. I got Dawn of War, Dawn of War 2 Retribution because it came in like a thing that was shipped like a book, which is really cool. And when you opened it up, you got a poster, shows you a poster, and art cards, which I will never understand. What do I do with an art card? Oh, dude, I love art cards. Yeah, but I look at them and go, oh, that's quite nice, and then it goes back in the box, and I never see it ever again. And then two years, I want to move house or something, I'll be like, oh, that's quite nice. Back in the box again. Okay, James. What James? What was yours? Did you say yours? I'm thinking it's probably Bioshock. The first Bioshock game came with a big daddy figure. And nice. Terry. Dan, that that was a really good figure. Uh, the last one I bought was Assassin's Creed Three, the Join or Die edition. And what did that come with? Uh, that come with a medallion, uh, um, this George Washington's notebook, which was actually really funky. You flick through it, and then it had these certain pages that you could actually just—they were sort of basically two pages stuck together. But you could actually just open them up a little bit, and they had like little less like inscripts of uh, uh, assassins sort of notes and that in the in the middle of it. it was actually oh, really they weren't cool. just sticky pages for the sake of no, they sticky. weren't just sticky <laughs> pages. No, George Washington's dirty. As drawings. much as I like that collector's edition, though, it was not my sticky pages. And Con, did you yeah. say yours? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the the God of War with the um, crappy God of War. Uh, statue that's really really bad. Uh, it comes in a box that looks like an Easter egg to me. <laughs> uh, and yes, Martin, it comes with a nice tin, but I just can't <laughs> bring myself to open it. And it's not that I can't bring myself to open it because it's amazing. I can't bring myself to open it because I'm bored of it already. 
See, there it is. It's a collector's edition, but you collect it and now you hate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I collect it and I hate it. I'm just waiting for something absolutely awesome to come out. I don't know what you know what is going to be awesome that I'm really going to want, but Grand there's going to be something fine. that I'm going to raid the PlayStation 4 piggy bank to buy. Right. I had to pre-order the PlayStation. Ah, uh, sorry, the Grand Theft Auto Special Edition. I just couldn't help myself. What comes to that then? Um, nothing really fantastic, to be honest. Uh, you get a hat, a flat peak with uh, Los Santos across the top. You get a blueprint map. Uh, you get a few in-game items. Uh. Some other stuff, but it eludes me at this time. But yeah, I, quite, no, see, I, I hate when collector's editions have in game items because if I'm spending the money on a collector's edition, I want a toy. Yeah. Or something I can put on a shelf. I don't want a different skin or a new gun in the game. No, agreed. But I, I don't know why I, I, just, I just have to have this, spe this collector's edition. Was there much of a difference between that and the standard edition? Uh, price wise? Price wise? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is. Uh, it's um, a hundred and twenty. Whoa. Yeah, it's it's a steep. steep yeah, that is great quickly. <laughs> it's certainly <laughs> dead, but I I don't know why. I'm just completely drawn to this one. Right. So next. You seem so next. Well, I was going to say God. next week we're going to see Terry's GTA, my million pound uh, Grand Theft uh, Saint <laughs> Row, Con's million pound Lego, Martin's Tin Collection, and James. What did you want? I inside. don't know, there's nothing I actually want collector's edition wise. Hey, James is going to buy some clothes. Tell you what I do want is game instruction manuals. Where the hell did they go? Okay, oh. so James' request for next week is uh, instruction More manuals. paper. Yeah, dear EA, please bought manuals in your games. Somehow, <laughs> with me. Uh, somehow this entire podcast has just become the grumpy old men of Yeah, games. we should stop now because this is getting too much. This could be our gimmick. <laughs> right guys, uh, we'll, we're going to stop now uh, We'll see you guys probably next week For the same kind of thing We'll come up with some new topics and new things to talk about um, So we'll see you guys soon Right, see you all next week guys Slow. Slow. Bye, Bye.